Well, uh, everybody, uh, thank you for joining us for the uh, 241 MFTF demo um, in person and on uh, BlueJeans. Appreciate it. I uh, hope it's uh, going to be nice and uh, uh, educational for everybody about the new feature that we have in 241. So uh, 241, let's just, just dive right in. It's a patch release, um, but it is a patch release with a pretty uh, important um, addition to it. Uh, XSD schema validation is now enabled by default in the following MFDF commands, right? So generate tests, run tests, run failed, and run group. Your main uh, running and generation commands are all going to have that enabled by default. Um, so what does that mean? That means that if you um, if you have XSD violations, um, generate tests will now throw um, an error and uh, return with an exit code of uh, non-zero um, to tell you that there's problems with uh, test generation, which is good. Um, However, with that being added into um, added as on by default, we actually also added the debug, debug option, also dash D. Uh, that takes a couple different arguments depending on uh, backwards compatibility uh, requirements, essentially. So um, it's going to be three different possible options there. It's going to be uh, default, which is the same as not uh, specifying D, which just runs XSD validations on a fully merged file. And uh, what a fully merged file here means is that uh, we're not running XSD validation on individual files unless you go with this developer option because it takes a pretty big hit on uh, generation performance and generation time. Um, so again, by default, pretty quick, easy addition. Uh, if you have XSD validations, it will show you, and I'll demo it here in a second. But it won't give you the file name. If you need the file name and you can't find the validation very easily, you can add the developer um, option, which Again, runs them on individual files. And again, that's going to be very slow, especially with the uh, amount of files that, uh, or uh, test material files that exist in CE, EE, B2B, et cetera. Um, but this is a, a last uh, resort if you can't find it uh, manually. And there's some tricks to be able to find it manually without sharing the site. There's also the debug option none. So it doesn't run XSD validation on files at all. And under bold right here, it should only be used for backwards compatibility. If for some reason, like extension developers, um, when, whenever we deliver uh, 241 to um, the developer branches that we use internally, um, we're gonna fix all of the XSD validations. However, if uh, you guys uh, want to bump up to uh, MFTF 241 and above, while you guys are working on your own tests, um, you will definitely probably want to use this with some older um, versions of the, uh, the test code base that were released with XSD uh, uh, violation errors. Um, so again, I'll show how all three of these different options work uh, right now, even. I, I, I can add something to this. Sure. Uh, right after we released, even before we released it, we went to Magento code and we, and two to three develop and two to two develop branches, we fixed all of this XSD schema violation. So those two branches currently work in properly and you don't need to worry about this. The only Issues you will see on already released Magento code. That's why we have the debug. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. The idea is, is for the flag to be on at all times so that the test code base stays nice and clean. But since this is a patch release and we understand that people might want to use it against older code bases, you just want to keep everybody supported for as long as possible. Okay, cool. So let me just uh, make some uh, changes to this DevDocs test right here. Um, this is the one that's included with an MFDF code base. And I'm on standalone right now. I'm not attached to the uh, uh, Magento code base only for um, ease of demoing this and keeping it nice and short. So I have this test right here. I'm just going to change this to M on pages or just add in some extra stuff right there uh, just to break it essentially. I'm going to do bin. Yeah. Generate test. Dash F just to skip uh, the do force generation so that I, I don't because I don't care about the modules or over order. And I'm not going to provide any debug flag at all. So this is what you guys are going to be seeing as. Um, the normal behavior. So right here, schema validations files and on the XML files. So right here, pretty easy to see failure schema validation error element and on pages with a bunch of garbage after it. Not expected on line 21 of this file, right? So um, again, pretty fast feedback. Um, with the full Magento code base, it still doesn't add that long on the uh, normal generation time, which is ideal, which is the reason why we do it on the merged file as opposed to the individual file. So if I see right here, this is pretty easy to search for an entire code base. You can just, just can copy into it. Let me just search the entire uh, dev test directories for this specific element, which was obviously a typo. And you can see it's on the log file as well as the dev.txt file. So now I know that I have to fix that. 
Yep. Let me uh, add the debug flag for developer. <coughs> so this is not going to take very long at all on the um, the test code base because again, there's not a lot of files to uh, run the validation on. But you can see that with developer, it, it says there's a failure. However, the actual exception message is going to uh, tell you exactly what file it has a problem in. Uh, this can be pretty useful if you're um, wanting to uh, just work with your own uh, extension or uh, aside from the code base itself, what you can do is you can just uh, keep MFPF on its standalone, um, go up to dev test functional, and then add in the um, the extension or symlink the extension under here, kind of similar to how devdocs lives. Uh, that will allow you to basically only run this validation on your extension files, even though generation will fail later, probably for other reasons. At the very least, uh, you can uh, see if there's going to be XSD validation errors there. And lastly, let's not fix that. I'm going to change it from developer to none. And you see the generate test generated just fine, even though this is probably going to be a, a bunk PHP that's not actually going to be able to run. If for some reason there's some smaller violation, like um, in a page, for example, or rather a section, if I uh, type whatever here, wrong attribute value, but since uh, type is not actively used uh, in generation, this will mean that you can still run the test just fine. And I think that some of the validation errors that we had on uh, 2.3 develop and 2.2 develop were also done. Yes. Yeah, more benign validation errors that didn't actually cause any test uh, running problems. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been able to be checked in. But for the health of the code base in the end. Cool. Um, that is the uh, meat and potatoes of uh, 2.4. Minor bug fix is not really even worth mentioning. It was just uh, it was to help support this SSD schema validation, but you guys can read on in the change log if you're so curious. Uh, do you have any questions uh, from audience or anybody in, here in this room about the 241 content? Uh, I got a question. Please. Very new to um, Adobe and Magento. Cool. So can you just talk a little bit about um, maybe what the generate test command does and um, how the sure. SSD schema comes into play. Sure, sounds good. So generate tests uh, does a couple things, right? It'll, um, and if somebody else, if I miss anything, please do add on to it. Um, it's basically the, what it does is before it does, um, it, it's going to read all of the XML files that are in the disparate um, uh, folders within uh, Magento. Over here, let me uh, give an example here. So you have, um, you have a Magento module. Let me make this a little bit easier to kind of tell. You have a Magento module. I think this is kind of a catalog that I had open. Mm -hmm. You can have your test, your test folder inside it, and then there's yeah. going to be MFDF, yeah. which has these separate different folders inside it, which all have a bunch of XML files that are the disparate test materials, right? So it'll uh, it'll find all of these and then read these, but um, it'll read them and then it'll do validation on them. But it'll also uh, ping Magento uh, to see which modules are enabled and then exclude certain modules from this uh, merging and resolution order, right? So let's say for some reason my Magento instance didn't have catalog, MFDF is not going to, yeah, <laughs> MFDF is not going to use catalog um, in generation. Okay. So like tests and uh, deltas that might alter other test workflows might be there. Okay. Um, that is kind of it. And then obviously it'll, uh, it'll encode all of those into objects and then the framework will do its own magic and then it'll output PHP at the end of the day. So the XML just defines details about the test that needs to be run? It, it, it defines the test part. The pages, sections, elements, data, uh, metadata, how to create an MP using web API, and also the test. Mm -hmm. So literally everything regarding but, but there's not like PHP no, in the no. test no. of yeah. each. Section. It's, it's, it's abstracted out. But yeah, the framework will generate that. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Depending on how new you're here, I have a, the admin login test. This is like the uh, canonical first test that we ever wrote. Um, it's a pretty simple test, but you can kind of tell what the workflow here is. It just it goes to a page, fills in a field, fills in a field, clicks, closes admin login oh. notification, and then sees that the current URL has been redirected. This is very much like. Um, driving a web page with Selenium or something kind of, yeah. but you're using XML direct. Exactly. MFTF mm -hmm. uh, XML to, to tell them what to do. 
it's pretty much. Selenium's the last part of it. That right. Exactly. control it, but yeah, yeah, we that's all abstracted away, so you don't have to think about any of okay. that. Yep. Very cool. Yep. Yeah. That light bulb. Thing. The <laughs> other big thing that uh, the other big thing that this uh, affords us in XML, because obviously writing in a native language is pretty much nine times out of ten going to be easier than writing in like this weird uh, abstracted language, mm -hmm. right? Is um, let's say I needed to do something else in this test. Uh, let's say that uh, I added in password two as a field, so now users have uh, two passwords. So basically, is uh, you do another fill field, if my computer would respond well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You do a new, new fill field, and then you say uh, fill in or my new field right here. Uh, selector, I'm just going to do blah. Doesn't matter for right now. However, uh, there's this before and after attributes right here. Let's say I wanted uh, to fill in before or after the uh, password fill in. What you can do is actually copy the step key over here, which is a reference to this action. Yeah, sweet. Yep. So that's ordering, and maybe you have ways to do conditionals and stuff like that. No, conditionals no, are conditionals mostly based no. on the uh, on the module resolver order, right? So let's say that my um, my extension is the one that adds in this new field. Yeah. Um, if it's not enabled, if it's enabled in Magento, it's going to uh, include that delta. If it's not enabled in Magento, it actually will keep the test flow completely clean of it. Cool. That's how the that, that's how that kind of conditional like if this is enabled, do this. If that is enabled, do that is built in. Sweet. Cool. Good questions, though. Cool. Uh, do we have any other questions internally here, externally? I, I can't see the comments on my screen right now. Sure, but... I don't see any comments externally. One more. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so these schemas are hosted on Magento somewhere. Uh, they're in MFDF. So uh, MFDF is a Magento dependency that you can uh, declare via the composer file, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and um, let me see. I'm trying to require dev. Oh no, I, I composer removed it because I was testing something. Okay. Uh, but it's essentially in the composer file that'll tell you which MFTF version is. So like as we add actions, so like if you want to add a new action to MFTF, you would add it to the schema. Yeah. And then you would need to bump up the Magento version or MFTF version two. Right. That. Right. So you don't have to go to the internet to, to do this. You could make up your own schema. Mm -hmm. And uh, one one thing to to note on that is uh, the schema location up here. Is, uh, it's it's dictated via URN as opposed to a, a hard coded path or something like that. Okay. That's the only uh, additional thing you need to do to be able to use the uh, the schemas. It's a it's a generate uh, URN catalog yeah. command or something like that. It's yeah. the same thing that Magento does. Sure. Essentially. Very okay. helpful. Yeah. Great questions. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Um, anything else? Just one more thing to add, we've also uh, enabled uh, XSD validations on the Jenkins side. We yes. Used a new parameter called MFDF underscore mm -hmm. debug underscore level. So you can actually uh, change or toggle between the control, uh, between the different uh, debug levels through your Jenkins builds as well. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, yeah, some of you guys like, external may have may have access to this uh, this pipeline, so this shouldn't be anything too new or groundbreaking. But just to show what's coming, yeah, it's a very good call out, very good point. Um, so all of those flags, and you if you're going to pass in none to developer uh, locally, you do it via the command line. However, under advanced parameters here and then MFDF parameters, you will see that there is an MFDF debug level, <coughs> which is set to default, which is how we want it to be in uh, in build. But if again for some reason you have your Wanting to run a newer, uh, this newer version of MFDF to older branches that are still have uh, broken XSD validation, you just change it right here to one of the, the, the values. It keeps scrolling up for some reason <laughs> to one of the values over there. Do you have auto refresh on the page on? Because I don't do it. For sure, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure I do. Also, also, if you are contributing to Magento to repo or any other Magento open source project, uh, all of these tests will be running with the default flag. So mm -hmm. You will, if you if you will have some XML violation there, you will see this in a little report. Mm -hmm. in, a little, in the console. In the console. In, in, a, in a console. The build will fail. Yeah. The build will fail. Mm -hmm. It'll fail early, even. It'll fail before running the tests. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Fail like red bubble or fail like yellow bubble? Red, red, Do red. you use yellow bubbles for anything? No. 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 Internally, yeah. I don't think we, we make use of warning bubbles at all. Okay. Very binary. <laughs> Any other questions, <laughs> guys? Well, if we have no more questions, we did have something that uh, Alex wanted to show off um, from one of the uh, upcoming uh, MFDF releases that everybody would probably pretty be pretty interested in. 
So that's that's the future where we're going. That's our next release. Uh, we'll include this feature. Uh, so just wanted to share what we are doing and where we're going mm -hmm. with this. So basically what we did, we included set keys into each action. Uh, so on your ALU reports, it will be easier to debug your task and understand where this action is coming from, from what action group or from which test file. So you will be just copy paste your step key and search in, in, in yeah. task. So that's the, the biggest feature of next release we will include. And the other one is uh, that all XML comments, okay. native XML comments, will be treated as a comment section. So if you have something like this, yeah, if you will add the native XML comment, it will be printed in your Lou report or your CLI report. So you, you can comment your code and see what pieces of task is currently run, what piece of task is currently run. So that's what, what we will have next for this. Yeah. Well, one of the, the big points of this is that right now in our code base, we have people who uh, make a comment like mm -hmm. this, like uh, skip this or uh, work around step or something like that, right? Like uh, leaving a, a little um, paper trail for other people looking at the test, not going to be needed anymore. You can just do the native, mm -hmm. native comments like that. It's going to make a lot of people really happy. Yeah, it's yes. been a highly requested feature <laughs> upgrade for a while. Mm -hmm. And it's going to make the test code base cleaner, right? Like the shorter you can make the test, the better. If you're just duplicating lines just for the sake of common, then why? <laughs> yeah. Does anyone have any questions on this? Well, sounds good. Sounds good. That's, that's it, I think. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and see you soon with the next demo release. Yep. Uh, slide deck is going to be available to everybody that are invited, and we can post it in the uh, community channel as well. It's yep. pretty small, so that's slide deck. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks. Wow.